you don't make a plan or make a goal and have a vision, then you just react your way into the future. And that's not what we want to do as civil engineers. We want to lead into the future. How we do our jobs as civil engineers, maybe as systems engineers, will be different in the future. What are the different cities we see evolving? And how can we really get an understanding of those cities? How can we immerse ourselves in those cities today? What are the different social infrastructures, physical infrastructures that can be created in which we can all come together and thrive? What's really important about looking at this through a world building lens is that it is designed to look forward and then thread back into the present. The further out you look, the more it changes our view of the present. We're literally forced to not only reimagine our communities, uh, but to rediscover our neighbors to rediscover many of the things that uh, are right in front of us. We're spatializing narrative and allowing the user to tell their own story as they navigate the experience of this virtual cityscape. What can a megacity grow toward so that it's serving a better purpose? You start looking at individual buildings then because you can typically shape a building. And can you connect several buildings together? The buildings might form coalitions and, and interact with the utility, and the utility will interact uh, with the uh, providers of energy all around. That becomes a transactive energy system, and the buildings can play an active role. I can design a microgrid that serves that district, or if we need the microgrid to serve an adjacent district, we layer those together. We need a water supply system that can meet 15 million people's needs. Every building in the future should be capturing sunlight and rainwater, and every building should be recycling its own waste. Ideally, the life cycle of infrastructure is one that is continuous or perhaps reused in the future without going back and re-emitting all that carbon to do the same thing over again. That's the way we've built over the last century and we simply cannot do it anymore. Buildings are not unlike a human body. They have bones and skin. They consume energy and regulate temperature and generate waste. What if architects use genetic tools from synthetic biology to encode the architecture of buildings right into the DNA of organisms? The facades now become active components. And one active thing that facades can do, they can breathe or they can sweat. You can infuse biological functionalities into structural building materials. Almost 100% of all the controls in buildings are going to have some element of AI in them and machine learning. As you walk into the building in the morning, the building will recognize you by your electronic signature. You would have created a profile about your temperature, your ventilation preference, and then some of this microenvironment might follow you. What would social cohesion look like in the city of 2070? Uh, it's reasonable to expect that it would actually be vertical. So, you know, going vertically also brings its own challenges in terms of safety and security. You might have 175 drones coming in at 11.45 a.m. delivering lunch. Where do they land? How much space are between them? What are the specifications? It just has to be designed in a way that people can interact and making sure that you're encouraging paths of travel that are spontaneous. We're at just the right point in time to get together and build basically the aerial equivalent of what we did in this country with the national interstate highway system and no longer be restricted to two dimensions. So how do you get the public involved in civil engineering, in the process of civil engineering? One of the best ways that we can make sure that all voices are heard and included is to start with the people who are doing the planning and developing and see what their teams look like. How can you ensure social equity and social justice and get input from the community for the projects that we're working on? We are very conscious about the demographic, the diversity of the community and the society, and make sure that we don't leave anybody behind. Creating these multi-use spaces is one way of doing that, of bringing people together. And once they're in the same shared space, there is more opportunity for connection, there's more opportunity for shared experience, there's more opportunity for civil dialogue. The best solutions on Earth, they come with diversity of thought. 
What I love most about the Future World Vision Project is that we can think about it together. We can have this dialogue. Users will encounter one another and have conversations across disciplines that will begin to feed back and bring new information into the system. We're trying to build a world and trying to build a machine that is creating absolute engagement of the user and of the engineer in their own future. The future world vision is really at the core of what we're trying to do at ASCE in transforming the idea of what a civil engineer can be. And that's how we think that we can advance the profession of civil engineering and attract the best and brightest. Oh my goodness, this fourth industrial revolution married to the fundamentals of concrete, glass, and steel is this incredible toolbox for society. It's really on us as civil engineers to pull that all together.